Pow! And based on the title of the video, you already know what it is. It's the Super Nintendo Classic Edition. Awesome. Now I'm sure there's already a bajillion unboxings on YouTube, so we're gonna fly through this pretty quick. You get the Super Nintendo console, you get two controllers, you get 21 games, including the bonus game Star Fox 2, never before released. And you get some excellent games. Super Mario World, Zelda Link to the Past, Star Fox, I believe this, yes, The Secret of Mana. I am excited. Also Mega Man X. Some excellent, excellent games here. What is this? Now you're playing with superpower. <laughs> That's a nice little Easter egg thing. And it runs over USB as far as I know. Now this, if you ever had the original Nintendo, it came with a poster. And uh, this is a big poster that you fold out. It's kind of a boring poster. It just shows some of the boxes or uh, some of the art from the games. It's not great, but it's a throwback to what we used to have. Here it is. So it's styled just like the North American original Super Nintendo. You have a reset button, power button switch, eject is a dummy. This is just a dummy. And it looks like these are your power ports, but they're not. So this thing just flips down. How do you get that at that? Oh, you're supposed to go at it from underneath. You're supposed to go at it from under. You pull it, flip it down, and it uses the same type of ports that the Wii used. Now that's gonna kind of ruin the aesthetic when you're playing, but when it's just on display, when you have no controllers plugged in, it looks very much like an old school Nintendo. You have your HDMI out, and you have one micro USB in. And what does it need? Input power, five volt DC, Super NES control deck. All right, now something I'm surprised that you get, which I was not expecting, because I don't, I thought that the NES Classic did not come with this you are actually getting a USB adapter. So that's excellent. Nintendo branded USB adapter for America. It puts five volt DC at 1.5 amp. It's the USB to micro USB. So that goes with the power adapter. Oh, and it does also excellent. Thank you, Nintendo. It also includes an HDMI cable. So that's great. You get an HDMI cable, you get, you get everything. Everything you need to hook it up. Plus you get two controllers and oh man, it feels just, it feels just like the old original Nintendo. Excellent job, excellent job. It feels just like the real thing. It's thick, it's fairly light. Model CLV202. So we can do a little bit of a tear down here and show what's inside of it, as well as what is the console used for screws? They're probably hidden under the feet. Now something you're probably curious about is how long is the cord for the controller because on the on the NES Classic the controller was absurdly short. The wire was absolutely ridiculously short. So it comes with a five foot cord now and I think that the original NES Classic had something like a three foot cord. So five foot cord. I also bought a six foot extension cable so if this is not long enough I can just extend it because it just uses the normal uh, Wii, st Wii style plug and there's lots of aftermarket extensions for that. Let me do a quick teardown. Let's take a look inside of the controllers first. So it just uses normal Phillips screws. Looks like there's five of them. And here we go. Yeah, so the underside is just plastic posts uh, with supports for your uh, behind the buttons so that there's not too much flex on the board. And then the board looks very old school. Check it out. You know, it's very similar to the way the original Nintendos were. So it's got the stress relief cable and that's the board itself. Bumper buttons have a separate circuit board on either side. You just pivot and the bounce back is the membrane on the board itself. Now I'm sure you want me to peel this up and look on the underside. Let's just take a peek under there. Ah, there's little contact pads under there. Well, things are flying out. Yeah, that's what I thought would be a problem. The front of the board had these contact pads that have this little rubber piece. And as that presses down on it, that would make a circuit on, on that type of a connection. So that's exactly what's on that other side. So I'm not going to tear it all apart because I do want to uh, keep it nice. Make sure I don't break it. You just have to be careful about how those triggers work. So I'm going to put this back together and then I'll uh, crack open the console. 
right, here we have the Super Nintendo Classic, and let's see what's inside. So I assume that we're going to have some screws under under these feet. Let's pop the feet off, and it's a deep hole. It's a fairly deep hole with a Phillips normal Phillips screw inside. So there's no tri-wing screws, no pentalope screws, nothing weird. And so far, I have not seen any warranty stickers either. Okay, so there's the four screws out. They're just little Phillips screws. So it just just lifts. Yep, the top just lifts straight off. Okay, and there is a connecting ribbon cable. So there's a board. There's a board and springs which controls the power and reset. And then underneath, it looks like it has an ESD shield. Yeah, can't really see the board. I would have to take that top plate shield off. Four screws in this top ESD shielding should lift right off. Actually, I think this is a heat sink. I have a feeling that there's going to be some thermal compound on that, and this is probably a, a radiator. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so heat pad, and there's the board. Okay, so there's some chip information on that one. Here's the main CPU, the R16. I'll have to take some pictures. So then besides the heatsink, there was one screw right there in the middle area that uh, that was holding the board down and then now I should be able to just lift the board up and out if you want to take a look at the underside. Underside just has a capacitor, another chip, and that's it. What's the other chip say? And we'll put it back together. It's going back together fine. I've just put the five screws back on the board and now we'll just close the clamshell. Just be careful of this ribbon cable when you close it. Make sure you're not going to pinch it in this side. It'll be fine. In my game room, I've just got this hooked up. This is connected to a 100 inch projector. Going to power it on for the first time. See what happens. All right, you got sound. And there's a little bit of a setup. There's a language setup. I'm going to choose English. And there we go, we're right into the menu. Actually, the art looks quite, quite nice. I'm surprised by how good the art looks. So if you press up on the up arrow, you can go to your display settings. Uh, it's set on 4x3 by default. Then you can choose your frame type. There's all kinds of weird frames. Theater. We're gonna do the weird 80s retro green thing in the back. No, it's kind of weirdly, weirdly pixelated. Uh, blue gradient's kind of nice. Let's uh, go back. Blue gradient. This was in there. Settings. Game demo. Classic demo. Burn and reduction. Reset. Factory reset. That would clear your saves. Language. Legal notices and manuals. Now I think all the manuals. Well, manuals are online. All right. I just have to start with Mario World. It was one of my favorites. Not sure how to make it go to the next right now. You have to wait. I'm getting some weird audio issues, but that might be my current setup. Wow. <laughs> Show so good I am a Mario. Now, can you get back to the menu? You cannot get back to the main menu. You have to press reset. You have to press reset on the console to bring yourself back to the main menu. So. You get Super Mario Kart, Super Girls and Ghosts, Castlevania 4, Super Street Fighter Turbo, Star Fox 2, which is the bonus game never released before, Star Fox, Secret of Mana, Mega Man X, Kirby.
Kirby Dream Course, Kirby Superstar, Final Fantasy 3, F-Zero, Earthbound, Donkey Kong Country, Contra 3, Yoshi Island, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, Punch-Out, Super Metroid, and that's the list. Alright, thanks for watching. <laughs>